Hi, this is the Togard H85 and with a modification you may have noticed that it's got a rain shield on it now, yes! And it works very effectively, unless of course the rain's coming in at stair rods straight into the lens then well it would be useless, but 90% of the time it keeps the rain off the lens. Brilliant addition, fantastic invention by Moi. <laughs> anyway, so the images you're going to see were taken from April this year right through to the end of September and it's 2021, so right up to date pretty much. Regarding night captures, the LED's a little overactive. Whenever a creature gets in fairly close, there's a huge pool of light as you'll see on the grass and of course when the creature looks up, the auto exposure seems to blow it out even more. If it was the other way around, if the exposure was darker, that would be absolutely fine. And I've tried blanking off the LEDs, hasn't always worked very well, but perhaps there's a bit more experimentation to be done. <laughs> Who knows? But you know, you can't expect much more really. But generally, I'm getting some nice pictures I'm quite pleased with. You know, it's out there just doing its thing. You never know what you're going to capture. So you need to put it out virtually every night. Regarding batteries, it takes eight double uh, A's. Uh, you can use rechargeable. It says don't use rechargeable, but I guess you can. But um, I'm finding I, I buy a pack of 50 on eBay <laughs> for about 14 quid, uh, and they're lasting for ages, particularly if there's not so much in the way of night captures. But uh, that aside, yeah, it's well worth having one of these guys. You'll have a lot of fun with it, that's for sure. So, without more ado, let's take a look at the results. And <laughs> we'll see what we've got. Due to the lens missing up at night in the winter months, I rarely use the trail cam then. This misty, spooky clip was captured in early April, when really we were still in winter, or at least it seemed like it, and spring didn't happen this year until late May, early June. Wow, look at those fangs. By the way, all video clips have been captured in 1080p HD at 30 frames per second. Now, 4K would be fantastic, but that'd mean a much, much more expensive camera. Eventually we found how the fox was getting in, and the badgers too. However, after blocking up the hole with a large, heavy stone, Foxy was still getting in. Well, they can climb high fences, of course. Oh, that's Reggie, by the way. There's always an annoying three second delay before capture starts, despite the camera being set to the shortest activation time with the PIRs. One creature that trips the camera is Mrs. Harper. Yep, there she goes, look, running around the garden. Yeah, totally oblivious to the fact that the cam's on. <laughs> I have to run out and switch it off, of course, just to preserve the batteries. This is why I don't bother with stills. With a relatively low shutter speed, anything moving is blurred. Far better to shoot movie clips and select the best still frames from them. In June we were away for a week and on return I was amazed to see over 120 captures of fox, badgers, squirrels and birds. Badgers you really don't want in your garden as they can go on a digging spree, ripping up your lawn. Incidentally, as you can see, moon phase, battery life, time and temperature data is at the bottom of the frame and because I'd forgotten to reset date and time after replacing batteries, it certainly wasn't 25C on the 2nd of January in the middle of the night. No way. Most clips I capture are one minute in length, maybe sometimes up to 90 seconds or even two minutes. But in order to not produce a three hour epic, most clips have been edited right down. I blocked the hole in the fence where they entered our garden. But watch the strength of this creature as he easily shifts a very heavy stone. For the first time, the trail cam captures shots of the fox in early morning daylight. Shh. 
Not sure if the camera makes any sound during activation or recording that a fox can pick up anyway. The magpies up in the trees certainly aren't happy. Hearing a loud squawking sound coming from a magpie, you can clearly see Foxy has captured his breakfast. The one and only daylight clip, and it's still getting in from somewhere. Our cherry tree gets raided every year, long before the cherries ever ripen. So we've lots of squirrel captures too. Well at least the rain shield's holding up well. Squirrels digging up and eating their nuts. <laughs> I'll say that without laughing, sorry. Sometimes the camera becomes a landing and takeoff platform too. Wood pigeons can be funny, if not a bit domineering in your garden. So after a quiet period in the summer, I switch my focus to capturing birds in the bird bath. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you can certainly recognise the magpie chicks looking at Tad Scrawny. I've had to enhance the audio at times as the mic is not very sensitive, unless there's a magpie squawking nearby, or indeed splashing. Pleased to capture this shot with the squirrel taking a drink. No doubt about it, wood pigeon numbers are certainly increasing in the UK. And this is a first, capturing a robin bathing at night. Seems a bit risky to me. The robin doesn't seem to be too phased by the wasp either. Robins bathe to help keep parasites off their skin apparently. Notice that shadow passing over twice.
Another first, after a plethora of wood pigeons and magpies, are these blue tits. Soon to be followed by great tits. Another great tit launches itself from the camera. So the rain protector's proving to be a good platform too. This guy seems to have a beak deformity, or a blob of amber stuck on. Yep, magpies certainly are aggressive. Who forgot to fill up the bird bath then? So there we go. Hope you enjoyed the results. And if so, please subscribe, bash the bell, and I'll see you next time. Cheers! Must reduce my coffee intake.